Welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. Thank you for joining us. Today, I'd like to welcome our guest, Tira, from the United States, who takes LDN for MCAS and POTS. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having me. So we are really nosy and curious to find out about you and your conditions. Could you tell us when you first started to notice you had problems? How long ago was it? Um, I think that I've had little bits throughout my life but when I really started to notice that it was bad was it was last February and I started taking bee pollen for my outdoor allergies and I would eat it every night with yogurt and pumpkin seeds and all this fruit and I started getting blister hives everywhere and then I felt like I was having heart palpitations but I kind of thought that I was just being dramatic. So I would just like knock out and fall asleep. And then I would have a really hard time waking up. And I'd wake up with my mouth swollen and my eyes and everything. And then even more blister hives. So then I had gone to um, just a walk-in doctor's clinic to see if they could tell me what was going on. And they're like, oh, your body's just reacting. We don't know why. Here's some prednisone. So I did probably... 10 rounds of prednisone and then I started to notice that it was from the bee pollen because there was nights that I would not have it and then I would have it again and I would be worse so then I googled that and I saw the mast cell and I was like there's no way this is so rare so then I made an appointment with my allergist and he was like there's no way you have that that is very rare so then they tested my arms um, for all kinds of allergies and I reacted to every single thing so He was like, yep, you definitely have it. And then I had contacted my birth mom and she said that it's in their family genes. So, Although it's rare, there are Mm -hmm. an awful lot of people that have it. I mean, they're estimating around 17% of the population have it, but are unaware. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) So other than um, the, the bee venom, uh-huh. What else was a trigger at that time? Um, chocolate is a big one for me, which I am a huge lover of chocolate, so that's really hard. I love brownies, um, and then every treat I get, it's always chocolate, and I hate that. And it gives me migraines, and it makes me so mad. <sighs> uh, I remember growing up, we live in the desert, and there's a lot of mosquitoes out here. And like when we would travel where they're even more prominent, I would get huge welts and my family would just get like the little dots. Mm. And I was like, wow, they just love me. But that's not what it is. It's my histamine. So that was another way that I knew that there was something more going on. Um, What did your allergist give you? I take Zoller. I'm sorry? Yeah. So I take Zoller. It's an injection and... I get it every other week in either side of my arm. So, and that's, that's worked great, but it doesn't last as long as I need it to. So Mm -hmm. I do good for like two weeks out of the month. So are you taking H1 and H2 blockers as well? I, I did. And that does stop the hives, but it makes me so dehydrated. My lips will get dry and peel. Mm -hmm. My feet will crack. So I'm still trying to navigate that one. Hmm. I know that there are several <clears throat> H1 blockers that you can choose from. I think there's about four of the mm-hmm. the top ones that you can buy over the counter. <clears throat> it might be worth having a look to see which yeah. one you took that really didn't suit you and try the other three because I'm told by a, an MCAS expert that she always gets patients to try all of all of those four for two weeks uh-huh. and see which one suits because <laughs> they're yeah, I'll have to do that. yeah it might help you because 
as you were saying, you, you get every other week where you're not feeling as good. So if we could get you feeling good <clears throat> in between, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yes. So we've talked about the food. What about light <laughs> and smells and that kind of thing? Um, sometimes I will smell stuff and I'll get like, it feels like I'm on like a cruise and I'm like all like, I feel seasick almost, which is kind of interesting. My family always teases me. Mm -hmm. Um, and with light when I'm pregnant, it's severely worse. So that one is frustrating. Usually anytime I'm outside or sometimes even inside, I will, I We'll wear two layers of sunglasses to help with that. Um, but yeah, it's just every day is different. Mm -hmm. What about the pot symptoms? Um, I do get those a lot worse closer to my menstrual cycle and around like that two ish week time, which I did get diagnosed with um, proge autoimmune progesterone dermatitis. And the Zolaire does help with that, but I would say my symptoms are worse around my menstrual cycle mm -hmm. with those. So could you, <clears throat> sorry, I've still got a frog in my throat, um, okay. explain a typical day for us. What's it like for you when you get up in the morning till you go to bed at night? I know each day is different, but if you have to pick <laughs> symptoms that, you know, seem to be apparent most days? Um, I'll go, I can go through my day yesterday. So yesterday I, when I wake up, I usually will lay there and kind of like look around and adjust, you know, to where I'm at. And then I try to go off of, I leave a little crack in my window so I can go off my circadian rhythm, which I do notice helps me naturally wake up. So it's not, if I do an alarm, I immediately get swollen. Really? So I, mm -hmm. so I wake up with the natural sun, if that's possible for me that day, then I'll lay there for a little bit. And then I get up with my kids and just try, we try really hard to do really slow mornings. I find that helps me the best. I don't like doing anything first in the morning. Otherwise I, my hands will start like, I'll pick stuff up and it will do the shock thing, you know? Um, so mm -hmm. After I get all ready, yesterday I took my kids to a play date and it was so hot outside. And I will just like start sweating and then the swollen and then get the butterfly rash. And so I just would chug water or throw some salt in there. Um, and then I start getting the spotty eyes and have to take a sit down with my friends and my kids and just slow. The, that's the only thing I can do is just move so slow which is hard with two toddlers, but that's what works best. And I, I do think that helps them not be anxious children to just take everything slow. Mm -hmm. So. Do you paint often or do you manage to avoid I, that? When I have my Zolaire, the, the first week that I get my Zolaire both times, I'm pretty good. But then when it wears off, I'll do the, you know, the congestion starts to come and I'll blow my nose and that's when it's the fainting comes or, um, getting my blood drawn, which that used to happen a lot before I found out what I had, that would always make me nauseous. If I stand up too fast in the morning, that's not ever a good idea. Or like if I'm sitting on the couch with my kids and we're watching a TV show or a movie, I have to like take my time to get up slow it's just the shooting up. When I stand up too fast, that's, I usually can hold on to something and I'll get the black or the white spots, but it is worse around my menstrual period, mm -hmm. my menstrual cycle. So I just plan for that and I have a calendar, what I put in there, eat different foods and then take mm -hmm. things slower on certain days. So is your diet very varied or are you limited to only a few foods? I found that if I don't eat the same thing two days in a row, that really helps me. It doesn't matter what it is. 
Um, I so on my calendar, I mark. I have an aura ring, so it will tell me when my menstrual cycle is coming. So in my calendar, I'll put certain foods based off of my menstrual cycle, but that still does vary. Um, so like if I have a strong grain in the morning, I won't do one for lunch. And sometimes I will at night. Um, I am not the best at that. I I'm still figuring that one out. It's just different every day. Still. I'm just still learning every day. Mm -hmm. Have you tried any natural therapies? Yes. So I love the, I think they're called ionic baths for the feet. Mm -hmm. I feel like that one really helps me detox and I feel quite a bit lighter every time I do that. And then I don't always, but you can do that 48 hours apart each time. Um, essential oils. I used to really love those and I still do, but sometimes if I use them and then I smell them again, it will take me right back to the sick. Because that's when I would only use them. So I have to be careful with those. But. I mean, some essential oils, I'm told, really are a bad trigger for people with MCAS. That's interesting. But some of them can be quite strong, can't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. So what would you say is the best thing you've done? Have you tried IG? I know some people have IG infusion yeah no i have not tried that um i'm actually not sure what that is me neither <laughs> i can't remember what it stands for but i know quite a few people with pots that have that and it works quite well but i understand it's very expensive oh i'll have to look into it yeah but it, it yeah. i know people that feel without it they can't function um, huh. And LDN is another one that people say is a game changer. Have you tried that? No, I hadn't. I hadn't heard of that one either. Okay, whereabouts are you based? Uh. -uh. What state are you? Do you live Utah. in Utah? Utah. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, I know there are pharmacists in Utah, and they would be able to help with prescribers if we haven't got any. But it might be mm -hmm. worth trying. I mean, LDN is a, yeah. a cheap drug. It's less than $30 a month. Um, yeah. Worth trying anyway. Yeah. To, to yeah. help you be more active with your children because mm -hmm. having two, <laughs> mm -hmm. how old are they? My oldest, she's turning three in July. And oh. then my son, his birthday is the day before Halloween, and he will be two this year oh, okay so they're very young and yes. very active and inquisitive yes. and turn your yeah. back and they're gone <laughs> yeah yeah yep yeah. yeah. and my my allergist thinks that they have mcas too oh which will be interesting so we've held off on their vaccinations so that they can find it better when they're older so that's been kind of interesting to navigate because they do as well have the allergy testing so that's fun to navigate when they're over at friends' house. Oh, I'm sure. With family, and we have to let everybody know all of the allergies. And I have interviewed several doctors who do genetic testing, hmm. and from that they can see whether a child is more likely to have reactions to vaccines than not. Some of them, it's never a good idea. And some of them, you know, you're going to be okay. Um, yeah. But I think that would be the w way I would go these days. Yeah. What I know. You know, if you know that there's only 1% chance of something going wrong as opposed to 40%, that would make you think, wouldn't it, you know? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, my... My oldest daughter, she just um, got her tonsils out and they came in, which I thought was awesome and asked the history of my husband and I, and I had told them that I had MCAS. So they gave her uh, Benadryl and a steroid and she went home after four hours of the surgery and usually oh. they have to stay 12 hours and she did great with that. Last one. So, yeah. 
it, it's awesome. It's so important having a team on your side when you need help rather than being dismissed. Yes. So that's really good. Yes, it's life changing. It is, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, having two small children, coping with your condition, coping with theirs, you know, hats off to you. That must be very tiring. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm very tired at the end of the day. I'm sure. And do you find sleep an issue or, or are you so worn out you just go straight to sleep? So I think I get overtired and then I get antsy during the night. It's... Sometimes I just sleep so well, I wake up and I don't even know where I'm at. And then there's days where probably like a week at a time, I will wake up so swollen and hot that I just have to keep standing up because the blood pools. So that I'll have to walk around a couple of times a night, which can be so frustrating. But that's something I'm really trying to work better at is the quality sleep. Mm. So. Well, it's so important if you don't have good sleep. How are you meant to function the next day? Yes. You're not prepared, are you? No. Your body's yeah. not fueled. No, and my heart rate never stabilizes during the night, which I can always fill. And the aura ring, are you familiar with these? No. Explain. So this, if I can get this is, um, it's called an aura ring. So it has a little, you can see that, a monitor inside. Oh, yeah. Um, and so this tracks my heart rate during the night. So it was telling me the quality of sleep I got, how many times I got up, my REM. Um, and I, my husband got this for me because I was taking the B pollen, and I kept saying I feel like I'm getting heart palpitations. So then he got me this so I could see if I really did. Um, so it's interesting on the app I can go in there and tag the foods that I ate. So that helps me navigate what I have to avoid and what makes my heart rate higher through the night which does affect my sleep so this has been amazing for my health wow is yeah. it expensive i think it was 350 so well worth every penny <laughs> yeah i'm sure and yeah. do, you, do your children sleep well my daughter does not and my son sleeps probably too well. He sleeps a very long time. Yesterday, um, I think he went to bed at 5.30, and he's still sleeping. Really? What's the time yeah. there now? It's 11. Oh, let's see. Yeah. 11.20. Wow. Yeah. So. That is a lot of sleep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then he wakes up and plays hard all day. <laughs> I should think so. He must be fully charged with energy. Yes. yes. And what about your daughter? Does she cope during the day? Um, She's very sensitive to light. So I never thought that toddlers were interested in sunglasses, and that is a thing that she loves. It really helps her adjust to the light. Um, she gets so worn out so easy, and she'll tell me, like, that her body, you know, is getting heavier. She's very, very good at explaining her feelings for the age that she's at and how her body is feeling, which I really appreciate. It's easier for me to give her what she needs. Um, as far as that goes, I think that she doesn't, my son is definitely doing better than her energy wise, but he also gets covered in rashes and gets the hives and stuff, which she doesn't have. So just the same things that I get, but different based on each child, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone's so. individual, aren't they? Yeah. With their health. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it was really nice meeting you and hearing your yeah. story. And thank you for yeah. sharing with us today. Yeah, it was so great to meet you. Thank you for having me. I'm Dr. Leonard Weinstock. The guy has been prescribing LDN since 2005, and I've seen the wonders. And I keep on seeing them, especially in hard-to-diagnose conditions.
They're not that hard to do, but once you know about mast cell activation syndrome, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, you'll find that 17% of your friends or relatives have one or more of these conditions, and you can help them. We're making a documentary to wake up the medical community to educate the population, but we need funding. So please, fund whatever you can afford, no matter how little, www.mcasfund.com. That's mcasfund.com. Any questions or comments you may have, please email me, linda, L-I-N-D-A, at LDN. RT.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciated your company. Until next time, stay safe and keep well.